Good morning, friends. This morning, I offer a poem titled Burn Brighter. Ignite us call us to go forth and set the world on fire. We embrace this metaphor because we believe our purpose is inextricably linked to helping others clarify and attain theirs. But how do we set our world on fire in this age of sickness, uncertainty, and fear? How do we serve and lead when we are disconnected from each other and the physical space that unifies our team? Who will show us how to press on? Lives perish while the flames of leaders around us dance erratically in the blistering winds of change. Their lights flicker to near extinction. Their sparks barely visible struggle to light the way. We cannot wait for them to lead. Let us turn to our God and the sacred light of the Holy Spirit that burns in each of us. Let our spirits draw closer to each other in spite of the distance between us and march boldly into tomorrow. Maybe it helps to imagine this time as a time of dousing of gasoline tossed onto our already steady burning flames of purpose and love. Let this accelerant consume and quicken us for the greater good. Shine on, my friends. May the brightest flames of our spirits, burning in unison, create a bonfire that sparks hope, ignites faith, illuminates love, and lights the way. In this uncertain age, when our brothers and sisters yearn for peace and light, we are called and stand ready to do magic to more than we did before, to burn brighter. Although we are still not physically together, I invite you into this shared virtual space. Come on in and welcome to worship, friends. We lift up Jay and Diane's granddaughter, Ruby, who turned three last week, who has, has been struggling with many seizures a day for her entire life. Her condition is very rare and has been almost impossible to treat. Three weeks ago, she got very ill with the flu, and after not being able to consume anything other than Pedialyte for five days, her seizures have stopped. We continue to hold those in the light whose lives may have been completely altered during these times of uncertainty. I invite you to center down and calm as we go further into worship. Let us pray. Loving God, help us to focus on what we have not what is removed or changed. Strengthen us when we feel discouraged or overwhelmed. Embrace us so that we know your loving presence within and among us. Walk with us as we bring your love and carry your light out into the world. Amen.
Good morning, friends. I'm bringing the reading this morning. Luke 10, 38 through 42, from the New International Version translation. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. All of us are familiar with the biblical story of the two sisters, Mary and Martha, in Luke 10, 30a, 42. I am sure you have heard more than one message about them. Mary representing the spiritual sister, and Martha seen as the busy one who has no time to listen to Jesus. Some see Martha as a woman of a strong character who wanted things to be always perfect, a person very aware of how things looked at her home and wanting to make her guests feel welcome. A busy and a structured person who told her sister Mary clearly how she felt and what she expected her to do. Mary, for many, is the example of a spiritual person more interested in listening to Jesus and less involved with the preparations around her. Two sisters with very different personalities. I see Mary and Martha as one person, not two. They, they are us needing to listen to Jesus and also knowing that things need to be done. During this last month, this passage has spoken to my condition. In the middle of March, we all began our staying at home time. Some of us thinking it was going to last just a few weeks. We took advantage of the extra time we had and did things for an hour to-do list. We did home repairs, cleaning, and other things that were necessary. Seven months later, we have probably done all the cleaning we were going to do. We have done all the organizing that needed to be done or we just moved to other projects. Zoom has become our new best friend. Teachers, students, and meeting are having their activities by Zoom. We have felt overwhelmed. We have tried to work from home, and at the same time, some of us have been taking care of our children and learning ways to communicate with others without seeing them. Our life as it used to be has changed. But one thing has remained stable, our ability to reach out to God. I have always liked the way that Thomas Kelly expresses the connection between our soul and the Creator when he says in his book, The Testament of Devotion, 
life is meant to be lived from the center, a divine center. Life from the center is a life of unhurried peace and power. It takes no time, but it occupies all of our time. He continues by saying, we need not get frantic. God is at the helm. And when our little day is done, we lie down quietly in peace, for all is well. Perhaps this is what Jesus was trying to teach Martha when she came to him upset because Mary wasn't cooperating. Luke 10, 40 says, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be done. She came to him, Jesus, and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. These days, we can become overwhelmed with what is going on around us. We lose track of that which is important in our lives. Jesus' answer to Martha is the lesson for all of us. He says in Luke 10, 41, 42, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few, are, few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary's need at that time was to enrich her spiritual life. It doesn't mean that she wasn't willing to help. She was doing what she felt was necessary at that specific time. One of my favorite Quaker person is Elizabeth Fry. She's an example of having Mary and Martha within her. We know her as a prison reformer. Her life changed when she was 17 years old, and she knew then that knowing God meant to serve others, and she spent her entire life doing that. When she was dying, she called her daughter Rachel and told her, my dear Rachel, I can say one thing. Since my heart was touched at 17 years old, I believe I never have awakened from sleep, in sickness, or in health by day or by night, without my first waking thought being how best I might serve my Lord. May we, like Mary, continue to sit at Jesus' feet, seeking his presence in our lives, growing spiritually every day. And like Martha, May we find new and creative ways to reach out to others during these difficult times.